Hello and welcome, this is Adrald in episode 12 of Greg Tech from Scratch. In this episode I'm gonna take a look at multi-block generators, including the thermal boiler, the gas turbine and the steam turbine. I'm gonna show you how to build them, how to get them started and how to maintain them. So let's get started. The first multi-block generator I'm gonna show you is the gas turbine. Now first you're going to need to craft yourself a bunch of reinforced machine casings and you're going to want to put them in a 3x4 base on the ground or wherever. Then you fill in the corners of the second level and finally you close with another 3x4 um, platform. And that gives you 6 outer blocks to fill. The insides must be left empty. On this side here, or on the opposite side, on one of the shorter sides, you're going to want to put a large gas turbine. And on the other side, a dynamo hatch. Now, the large gas turbine is the main block of the structure. And this one, the dynamo hatch, will output energy. And then you need four more blocks. You need a maintenance hatch, a muffler hatch, an input hatch, and an output hatch. And on those four spaces, the two here and the two here, it doesn't matter where you put the um, each of the blocks. So, you know, put them wherever your OCD thinks is best. And uh, then if you access the main block, it's going to tell you there is a bunch of problems. If at bottom you read incomplete structure, and you're pretty sure that you build this properly, then you can try replacing one of the casings. And if you check in again, the problem disappears. So just keep that in mind. Now there are a bunch of problems, there are six problems here, and to fix them you're gonna need to get yourself a bunch of tools. Um, a rubber hammer, a hammer that is not rubbery, a screwdriver, electric soldering iron with either soldering lead and soldering tin or soldering tin, a crowbar and a wrench and you can use these tools to repair this and to repair them you go to the maintenance hatch which is on the other side and you right click it and simply move a tool to this slot here and left click and if you're not in creative mode this is actually going to take durability of the tools and once you've used all the, the tools that are required, um, this should have this should have taken. There you go. Um, then it's not going to have any problems anymore. Uh, the goose gas turbine needs um, methane or hydrogen to work, and you're going to put that into the input hatch. Let's put some hydrogen, for example. All right. And now this should work except for you need a rotor. And there are several types of rotor. Each has a different durability and efficiency, so you can just take a look in any eye and see which one is for you. Uh, let's use a tungsten steel rotor, for example. And finally, to get the machine to work, simply right click the turbine block with a rubber hammer. And if it works, then it's going to start spinning it's going to say that it's running perfectly and the input hatch is going to uh, start consuming hydrogen at a very fast rate and the output hatch will generate water which you can pump out or do whatever you want with it and if we put a storage unit here we're going to see that we're getting energy at a pretty decent rate so after your gas turbine has been running for a while, it can develop the same problems that uh, we had to fix before. Now these problems are not going to make the machine explode or anything, but it's going to reduce its efficiency. So the more problems you have, you have the more, the less efficient the machine is going to be. And if you have too many problems, then the machine is just going to shut down. And if you notice here, the tungsten steel turbine rotor has lost a little bit of durability and it just lost another point, this is going to happen and eventually if the rotor breaks, the machine will explode. So how do we repair the rotor? Well, you take it out and if you take a look, you can actually use these tools, a hammer, a file and a wrench and that's going to give you a full 
uh, router, so why don't we do it? File and a hammer. And let's put them in a crafting table. And you can use uh, railcap rotors, by the way, in the um, in the gas turbine. And there you go. You have a fully repaired turbine and a, a few tools that have lost a point of durability each, or a few points. And then you can just put it back and hit the machine with a rubber hammer. That's how you make it work. So that's the gas turbine. Next up we've got the steam turbine which is crafted similarly to the gas turbine except with using standard machine casings. So again you make a 3x4 base of standard machine casings, fill in the corners of the second level and close with another 3x4 platform on the top. And then you're gonna need this large steam turbine rather than large gas turbine and you put it on one of the shorter sides and you get that. Dynamo hatch on the other side and then you're gonna need a maintenance hatch. You will not need a muffler hatch here, that's just for the steam turbine so you can use a casing instead. And then an input hatch and an output hatch. And if there isn't an output hatch it'll just remove the um, output. So it's not exactly, uh, you know, Uh, mandatory but it's useful if you want to use the output for something. Now again we've got that incomplete structure message I'm just gonna replace a standard machine casing to get rid of it and then to solve all the problems I could go ahead and use all the tools again but instead I'm gonna use this uh, tape BrainTech Aerospace Advanced Reinforced Duct Tape FAL84 which is crafted like that and that can solve all the problems at once. Um, if you check out the main block, all the problems have disappeared. However, this and the maintenance hatch changes to show that you're using tape. This is not a long-term solution. I mean, I think you can use more to increase the time it lasts, but uh, you know, the idea would be to use all the other tools instead. And this also needs a rotor and it should work if we put some steam in the input hatch because that's what it uses. It uses steam. Um, and now we just hit it with a rubber hammer and it should start spinning and generating energy through the dynamo hatch. And it's gonna consume steam at a really fast rate. And that's the steam boiler. Uh, I mean that's the steam turbine. It consumes steam in order to generate um, energy. It already consumed like all of that steam. That's pretty crazy. So, the final structure is the thermal boiler. The thermal boiler is a multi-block structure that is able to generate um, obsidian and ingots of tin, copper and electrum and it's also able to generate steam depending on what you give it. So let's first build one and you're gonna need reinforced machine casings. First you want to build a 3x3 uh, structure hollow in the middle, then you fill in the corners of the second level and then you build the same on the top as on the first level. And then you've got six holes where to put stuff. Now, um, one of the sides is going to have to carry a thermal boiler and then you're going to need two input hatches. I'm just going to put them here and oops, here and I'm going to put an output hatch here and on the top. And you, of course you're going to need a maintenance hatch and for that I'm going to put it on the bottom. And as you can see I cannot access it because it's not facing me. You're going to want to get yourself a wrench and make sure it's um, facing you. Wait, a, a wrench or a screwdriver? No, a wrench. Okay, so now it's facing me and I can access it so I can repair stuff and I'm just gonna go ahead and use some tape because that's a quick way of fixing everything and let's see if there are any problems. Incomplete structure, of course. I had forgotten about that one. So now it's working and I just need to provide lava through one of its sides. 
But before I do that, let me show you that you can configure the output sites to output uh, steam items and or liquids or any combination of those. So I'm gonna have this one to output steam for example and this one to output uh, liquids and items. And then let's feed it some lava. In fact let me set up um, lava generator here and I'll be back. Alright so one way you could do this is feed lava straight into the input hatch through a liquid act and this is kind of going to work but it's not gonna give it enough lava uh, for it to actually work properly so a way to solve this is to use for example tesseracts if we put a tesseract generator here and we give it some energy and let's put it in frequency 4 and then we put a terminal here and we give it the same frequency Except it doesn't let me. Now since the terminal is acting as the input hatch, I'm basically able to input lava through uh, several sites. In this case, uh, four different sites, which should allow the thermal boiler to work uh, constantly, rather than turn off and on, um, you know, all the time. And the lava filter is losing some durability. But the thermite boiler not only consumes lava to generate um, you know, these items, it also has another use. Let me show you what it is. Alright, if you remember this output hatch is set to generate steam. Now for the thermal boiler to actually generate steam, uh, let's turn it off first, disable. And now I'm providing it with water and if the machine is receiving water and lava in large enough quantities uh, fast enough and then you turn it on it's not only gonna keep generating the obsidian and ingots but it's also going to generate steam which you can output and use for other things so that's thermal boiler alright to finish the episode let me show you an advanced setup that I built a little while ago I've got two thermal boilers to the left and to the right of this steam turbine. Now the thermal boilers are being fed a constant supply of water and a constant supply of lava through tesseract terminals. So they are working constantly generating obsidian, uh, in this case only obsidian because I'm not using a filter, and this one as well. So they're working constantly through the lava and water that I'm feeding it and they're generating steam and two thermal boilers are feeding this machine enough steam for it to work um, you know forever until everything breaks of course and it's generating a bunch of energy and in this machine I've got the uh, maintenance hatch on the bottom that's how I reach it <laughs> so yeah and I believe um, two thermal boilers is exactly what you need to keep this machine running uh, happy. So that was episode 12 of Greg Tech from Scratch where we took a look at multi-block generators, an interesting new addition to the Greg Tech. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you next time.